Hello and welcome to the Plumes of Oz, where today we want to take you on an expedition out into the western area of New South Wales. The spring of 2022 came with extensive rain and flooding throughout eastern Australia. This has resulted in small numbers of fledglings getting out of the nests, for the nests have been flooded. Birds nesting in hollows of trees have done better than the open nesting birds. In western New South Wales, we have a floodplain extending out from the Darling River. And in the last spring, the riverbanks overflowed, causing extensive flooding. The floodplain is a major grassland, and many seed-eating birds breed and feed in this area. One of the birds to evaluate on this trip is the zebra finch. And the big question is, are the large flocks present? For the zebra finch is an open nesting bird and breeding in open nests is very subjective on weather conditions. It's a nine hour drive from the coast out into the Darling River floodplain. The easiest way to get there is to go through the coastal divide via the Hunter Valley heading towards Burke, then southwest to the floodplain. At the Darling River it's good to see that the water levels have returned to normal and as the sun sets I continue my drive out onto the floodplain. Quail are nocturnal birds and driving through the floodplain they are caught in the headlight beams. A good sign, we don't usually see quails running across the roads so the numbers are up implying that there is plentiful grass seed and with a bit of luck we will find the zebra finches. After settling in, sunrise is glorious, with more encouragement for a flock of galahs fly across the rising sun. These are also seed eaters. I feel positive about finding zebra finches. For me, the floodplain, beyond the Darling River banks and the River Edgums, is divided into either grassland or the scrubland area. There is an enormous overlap and here you can see the kangaroos on the typical scrubland. But there is still a lot of seed available in these areas. But here, in the grassland, where the semu is running, there is an abundance of grass. And in areas like this, we expect to find the zebra finch, an estral did finch, or a grass finch. And it didn't take long. Walking on a track, there was a barrier fence. And look at these finches perched on top. Not many young ones. Mature birds, male and female. Here the classic male zebra finch. As he turns you can see the striping of the tail and then the female next to it. In the scrubby area there is also grass that grows. It's the end of March. The grass heads have dried out and most of the seed dropped. There are multiple varieties of grass and before the cold weather approaches, most of this seed will be on the ground. And this is where the zebra finches will feed. The grass seed heads vary in size, and as they dry out, if they are large, they will blow off from the plant. And this is the case with the umbrella grass. The umbrella grass heads dry and are blown from the plant, dropping the seed as they roll along the ground. Looking at the dry head, you can still see there is seed attached. A tall barrier fence to stop roos and emu. Look at the grass heads caught in the barrier fence. They are blowing there and when they hit the fence the seed drops out. So along this fence line the wind and the barrier mesh create a winnowing effect. At the bottom of the fence there will be an abundance of seed. Unfortunately the amount of grass head that is catching on the fence is forcing the barrier fencing from its stakes but an ideal place for finches to feed. The misting effect of the drifting seed heads hides the feeding finches, which is surprising because usually birds are very flighty when things blow about them, especially finches. But did you see that one little budgie? And I was amazed when a flock of budgies flew out, they were concealed amongst this drifting debris of seed heads. Wow, it's looking good. The numbers are getting bigger every moment that I keep looking along this fence. Zebra finches, like most finches, like staging points. They like to look down at their feeding area before they go down. They like to observe from a distance to see if it's safe. 
But to a finch, there is safety in numbers. If it sees other birds feeding, it will fly down and join them. Look at the flocks that are flying about. This is the biggest number of zebra finches that I have ever seen on the Darling River floodplain. The numbers are good. For the zebra finch, the flush of grasses on the river plains from the rains has outweighed the disadvantage of flooding. Some of the finches are feeding off the grass head caught in the barrier fence. Others are flying to the ground. Then you'll see flocks just flying. I think flying for the fun of flight. I think there is so much grass seed about that many of the finches are indeed appetised. They really can't feed on any more and they are quite happy just to perch on the fence. Flocks are continuously moving in and out along this two kilometres of fence line. I must admit that one of the most exhilarating things with birds is to see large flocks. Particularly as they fly, they are just like fish, moving around in a synchronous way. And so it is with these zebra finches on the Darling River floodplain. As these flocks move back and forth from the feeding ground to a staging point, so they are observed by the raptors. And the falcons, kestrels and kites monitor along this fence. The larger falcons will take the finches in the air. The kites with smaller feet don't take them so much in the air, but if the finch gets caught in this mass of debris at the bottom of the fence, the black kite will move in. It's the same for the kestrel and the Nanking Kestrel can be found sitting along the fence in periodic intervals, just waiting for the opportunity where the finch is slightly caught under the grass seed and it can then attack. The best defence for the finch from raptor attack is a woody tree. Here there is a flock and in the immediate vicinity there were approximately four or five trees with similar numbers of finches. So you can see that they are indeed having a very good season. Well, apart from the bottom of fence lines, zebra finches feed off the ground. They are terrestrial feeders. Occasionally they will go up into the plant and feed off the grass head directly. And here another point where the zebra finches seem to be flying into, landing on old dried thistles. Looks like another staging area, for they aren't feeding on the thistle. Now there is a gravel tip close by, and landing on the thistle seems to be a staging area for something that is going on in the bottom of the gravel pit. Again, the character and charm of the zebra finch is overwhelming. Each has an individual character, yet as a flock just seeing them moving about like this, with an apparent common sense of purpose, is just exhilarating. And there at the bottom of the gravel pit, there is a puddle. So flying back and forth from a staging area to the puddle is what the finches are all about. This time, it's not for seed or food, but water. For to digest the dry seed, these birds need frequent water. The wind has come up and the umbrella seed heads are still blowing around, making the finches very flighty. My impression is that the birds of the Darling River floodplain are doing well despite the recent flooding and here in the autumn of 2023 
the population of zebra finches are bigger than I have ever previously seen. There are also good numbers of cytosines, also seed eaters, things like the blue bonnets, I have never seen so many. And with good numbers of cockatoos like the glass and the major Mitchells. These are all very good signs that the rain that has fallen in the west has been good for the birds. At the end of the drought four years ago, I visited the same area and the biggest flock I found of zebra finches at that time was 30 birds. So for the floodplain birds, things are looking good. My only concern was the increasing numbers of feral animals, in particular pigs. Throughout this video of the Darling River floodplain and the zebra finches, we haven't seen too many young, immature birds. They have a dark bill, and not finding them is not unusual at this time of the year, when night temperatures are going to plunge down to less than 10 degrees. Going further north into the tropics, the finches have an extended breeding season. But on this last clip, see if you can find the dark grey bills of the immature birds. 